Hello and welcome to Business Update. In today's episode, we'll be talking about or updating you with the latest uh, release or update with regards to the game Black Meat Wukong. So we'll take a look at the latest uh, release of their trailer. Looks interesting. Next, we'll be talking about Apple's child abuse detection uh, feature they're trying to implement. Whether this has severe ramification in terms of if you're a user, does it violate your data privacy and so forth. Uh, third, we'll be talking about Teslas. Obviously, it's another Tesla issue, but in this case, not as severe as before. But nonetheless, uh, it regards to their non-refundable fee uh, if you plan to purchase a model Tesla vehicle in the future. And finally, the update regarding our Olympic medalists who have come home bring uh, glory to our nation by winning gold, silver, and even bronze. And their reward, not just monetary, but they've received a new car, but not the typical car that you would expect here. So anyway, let's get started here. So for our first story, as mentioned, so I've been following this game I don't know, uh, since last year when they first teased the first uh, uh, first release of the game Black Meat Wukong, which is the Monkey King of sorts. So if you're fa following the, the, the story behind it, it comes from Chinese origins that made, you know, TV series, drama series out of it, even comics. And now they're trying to turn it into a video game. And it looks compelling. It looks interesting in terms of what they plan on doing and how they visualize it. You know, it got me interested. That's why I was talking about it I think, last year. And now they've updated it with a new release of new gameplay here. So let's take a closer look here in terms of what it looks like. Okay, so obviously it's still the same character here. And the question here is, what other gameplay features are they offering now? So let's play the video so I think I can skip a little bit so the graphics looks nice huh? in, in fairness so obviously will the fi finished products look similar to this one and so forth now based on the story alone there's a lot of interest that would you know, get people interested to play the game even I am interested so with how the story would pan out, obviously at the end of the game, uh, at the end of the day, not at the end of the game, at the end of the day, it's the game that matters most to many users here. So obviously what we've seen in the past, it looks interesting in terms of the abilities of the character and how it's able to transform from its natural state to a small insect, I would like to say. And then in terms of battling enemies here, he has different abilities, so it looks interesting here. Anyway, let's skip to the more interesting part. Let's see if there's... Uh, so I can see here, so this is actual game footage, so you can see here, it's very interesting here. Now let's see some actual uh, gameplay here. So here are some enemies that he has to fight. So obviously you have his staff. That you can use to attack. So it looks common enough. So you can see some HUD elements there that you know the character has in terms of life energy, maybe some magic and so forth. And obviously you can see that the setting is in the snowy mountain, so you can see how it reacts with the snow with the environment here. Anyway, let's look for an enemy here that uh, a boss battle of sorts. So here we have one. So you can see it's using a lot of its abilities, so trying to avoid, does it look fluid and so forth. Now, obviously, you know, the, the graphics looks, you know, not, not bad. And obviously, you know, for a single player mode, you know, the story is important and as well as the gameplay itself. So. You can see, you know, there are patterns from the enemies, so you have to learn its movement before you can actually defeat it. Now, you can see that the staff of the character, you know, extends, similar to, like, how Goku's staff in Dragon Ball Z works. I think that's where the character for Goku is based from. But anyway, uh, let's see if there's any other abilities that it, it's using. 
So he's healing right now. Let's see if he uses any other special abilities here. So it's still dodging it. So you can see the shadow here. So, you know, it's typical boss battle fight here. But let's try to move along. See if he, he uses any abilities here. Did he use an ability there? No, so there's more story here. Now, here the different uh, boss battle with a dragon of sorts. So again, you know the the environment here looks you know look looks looks nice, and obviously the how the story flows will ultimately dictate whether this is a compelling game, you know. But based on initial insights, you know, looks interesting here. Now, whether this is what the finished final game would look like, obviously only time can tell here. Anyway, let's see a little bit more. Does he use his ability here? Let's see here. We can skip here a little bit more. No, it's still using eye ah, here. So he'll be using, so you can see here he's moving on the top of his top. So it's to avoid the damage there. Oh. So again, it's fighting different types of enemies here in different uh, areas and regions. So so there's going to be a lot of fighting here, so not bad, so to speak. So question here is, when will they release the final game here? Now, obviously, based on the game, it's using Unreal Engine, which is used by Epic Games there. So I'll keep everyone stay updated in regards to the state of the game on when they're going to release it. So looking forward to to the finished product here now whether it be released for pc or different consoles as well so stay tuned for that one anyway so for this type of game obviously if it's a great game you know uh, i'm still holding my breath because of what we've encountered with the recent release of uh 27 cyberpunk 2077 in the past so you know i'm thinking positive here hopefully uh, what do you call this? Uh, this will do tremendously in terms of performance. Anyway, so continuing. So for our next story, so we have Apple with regards to their plan to release an update wherein they will able to detect or identify child abuse photos which they will report to the authorities here. Now, obviously there have been a lot of back backlash with regards to their, go you know, no matter how noble the idea here is there are growing concerns that this would open pandora's box with regards to uh if it starts from here what's stopping them from venturing to other aspects and here's the interesting who how are they able to decide which uh which photo is legit or not and what if they make a mistake there it's not as if they're technologies that is 100 percent foolproof right so until they can confidently state that it's 100% effective, then you know there will be a lot of problems arising from this scenario here. Anyway, according to the article here at Gizmodo.com, uh, Apple's not digging itself out of this one. And there's been a lot of uh, backlash, as I mentioned. And according to an online researcher, they go on to say that they found flaws in the Apple's new child abuse detection tool that could allow bad actors to target the iOS user. So, obviously, they, they've introduced the, the, the key ring, the eye track. I forgot what it's called. Wherein, if you lose your keys, you can easily track it. Again, noble intentions could be used by bad actors to, you know, to, to track individuals here without that person knowing it. And if you're not an Apple user, you cannot easily detect in your smartphone device. So another here, it, this is more even more invasive since they're going out of their way to implement a software update in your smartphone and they would de uh, detect or identify any malicious content. Now obviously finding child abuses is important, I'm not saying it's not, but the point here is you're invading people's private, uh, not just homes, but private information here. And who will manage or who will who will watch those uh, the watcher so to speak right and you know obviously there have been a lot of critics uh, regarding this one and uh, they also go on to say that it's a slippery slope towards broader surveillance and again i don't think apple is in the business of surveillance right 
or are, are they trying to replicate what Facebook is doing, Google is doing, and even Amazon is doing here? And that's not their business model, right? Anyway, and it goes on to say that their goal is only to scan for bad images, but the issue here that it can be exploited and tricked to potentially target users. So again, is it foolproof? Until they can provide evidence that is the case, then you know wh why even bother with it? Because uh, there was uh, a user, a GitHub user, who was able to reverse engineer the process by scanning the text algorithm and publishing the code in his page. And according to Igvar, uh, in a Reddit post, that the algorithm was basically available in iOS 14.3. Uh, as obfuscated the code and that had taken the code and rebuilt it in Python script to assemble a clear picture of how it worked. And how it worked is within a couple of hours, uh, another researcher stated that they were able to use the posted code to check the system. So meaning it can be fooled. If it can be fooled, then there could be a false positive here. If there's a false positive here, then will there be any repercussions on the company such as Apple here? Because if you're going to implement a faulty system in the first place, you can imagine the, the harm it could do rather than the benefit that you're proposing here. Anyway, uh, the issue here is misidentifying an image, creating a what is called a hash collision. So meaning uh, creating a, a false false positive could be detrimental if a person was obviously suddenly accused with no 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 uh, what it goes uh, due process they were just simply accused and then you know reported to authorities normally even police or even the federal government uh, or the FBI has to go through the proper channels before you can even invade someone's privacy here Anyway, uh, the system is automated to search for unique digital signatures of specific known photos of child abuse. So again, you're relying on technology. It's not as if it's foolproof already, which is, I think that's where the problem lies here. Even I would be apprehensive knowing that Apple is intending on implementing this uh, such uh, application. And in the hash collisions, as mentioned earlier, it involves a situation in which two totally different images produce the same hash or signature. So that's where the, uh, the we'll call it the false positive could, could could happen, and this has the potential to create a false positive, and even potentially implicating an innocent person, and that's the key here for having child porn. So if it's not hundred percent foolproof, then why implement it? Is it just trying to drum up better PR for the company? And obviously there must be an ulterior motive because you could have done a lot of you know benefits maybe improves customer service better product but why focus on the software itself so the question here is that's why many of the companies that are being levied the uh, antitrust issue uh, is apple a software company or a hardware company now obviously as a company it's their goal to you know uh, diversify and grow their company but you know it just goes to show uh you know uh, are you a jack of all trades master of none so to speak and you know creating this technology is kind of a slippery slope as mentioned earlier that you know it, it might do more harm than benefit as it's already uh, originally intended here and even apple here stated that uh, it said that it had set up multiple fail safe uh, to stop situation but again does fail safe is it 100 percent proof that's my main question here if the answer is no then why implement here now is it just because they want to collect data What's stopping them from collecting that? Because it's not as if they've done this before, right? That after an update, they would do something to your phone that would affect performance. Remember the battery issue? They were caught doing that and making excuses stating that, you know, they did that to protect the interest of the battery. Yeah, really? Then why not be upfront about it, right? Tell, tell, tell to your consumers. They would understand that. But is it maybe because you have other or tell your ulterior motive in terms of maybe uh, producing negative results in your older phone so you'll be encouraged to buy a newer phone so it will drum out more revenue for the company but we have to wait and see anyway uh, it goes on to say that the hash database encoded for future iPhones operating system is supposed to be encrypted but again 
the the false positive scenario is you know kind of concerning if you think about it and they go on to say that there's very little chance of an attacker discovering and replicating signatures that resemble the images contained within it unless they themselves are possession of actual porn well the issue that they mentioned there is very little chance they didn't say there's no chance right it has to be foolproof because if you cannot guarantee the accuracy of the result then you know if even if just one person one innocent person was accused of that that's going to have a significant impact on their personal life right they'll be criticized ostracized even put to jail just because of apple's doing here and what if they were in the wrongdoing is there a recourse to sue the company for implementing such a, a dangerous uh, idea here right it's one thing you're selling a product it's another installing a software to do certain things and not other things and maybe later on you change your mind and you want to look at everything else right anyway uh, they go on to say that it has triggered only 30 different hashes have been identified so which makes the event of a random false positive trigger highly unlikely but again the, the, the keyword they're using is highly unlikely but it's not totally zero and that's the concern here no matter how good the argument is if there's no zero chance of happening then it's okay but can they guarantee the certainty here and they go on to say that if other mechanisms somehow fail a human reviewer is tasked so meaning you're admitting that it's not 100 percent proof the fact that there's going to be human intervention in the end and again humans do make mistakes so if you cannot rely on the technology and you have to rely on people at the end of the day then why are we doing this process in in the first place so they're going to task on looking over any flag cases. Just take a look at YouTube, right? There have been many YouTube channels that have been striked down because of DMCA, copyright, and so forth, right? And they have the algorithm that's looking into this. And, you know, if the algorithm is at faulty, do you blame the company? Can you sue the company? And then if you, you know, try to file a case that, you know, you want to have some reconsideration, then a person like what Apple is suggesting here is going to review. So your life would depend on that person's uh, reviewing. What's the process here? Who, who's the person behind it? What's their what's their qualification, right? So there are a lot of things that needs to be vetted out first before they can even actually consider implementing this, uh, you know, uh, big plans. And because it has significant repercussions to individuals and to the society. Now, according to an assistant professor of computer science and public affairs at Princeton University, uh, Mr. Jonathan Mayer goes on to say that the fear surrounding a false positive may be somewhat overblown. So maybe, uh, am I thinking too much? But there are more broader concerns about Apple's new system that are legitimate. So, Mayer here, for everyone's concern, is the one who helped design the system. So obviously he might have bias there. But at the end of the day, What's the responsibility of Apple if they made a mistake here? If they, if there's a false positive, there should be a, you know, they should, can they be penalized or or sued if that's the case, right? Because if there's no responsibility attached to anything that they're doing, then, you know, they could just really, really do whatever they want. Anyway, uh, even uh, uh, Mayor uh, goes on to say, now the system had obvious shortcomings. Uh, that it could easily be co-opted by government and other powerful entity, which is another issue. They've been promoting the, the 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 security and privacy of the smartphones here. And if you open a backdoor to your software, then it opens up to a lot of possibilities, which is you cannot guarantee anymore the safety and security of your consumers here. And if I'm as a consumer, why would I patronize your product still? Which is kind of counterintuitive what you're trying to promote here. Is it secure, not secure? Which is it? And what's interesting here, they go on, he goes on to say that the system could easily be repurposed for surveillance and censorship. It's not as if the government is not doing it with their NSA, but nonetheless, you have a private company, uh, public health company, sorry, that can do the same thing in a much broader sense with the public, no with the public knowing what's going on here, which is kind of scary if you think about it. And obviously... Uh, whether people agree with it or not, obviously at the end of the day, only the consumers can dictate what is allowed and not allowed now. 
what's interesting in the United States, you know, the the government is doing a lot of catch up because other nations in other regions like in Europe uh, or in parts in Australia that, you know, they are very vehement in, in terms of how those companies, you know, act as monopolies here. And especially with how they are invading now closer to home or even inside your homes, so learning what you prefer, your movement, things that we do uh, online or even offline. It's kind of, you know, we, we have to be aware, so to speak. So even Apple announced that it's rolled out, uh, it's going to affect 1.5 billion devices around the world. So you could just imagine the the, the impact that it would have a lasting effect. Even if, let's say, out of those 1.5 billion, even one person was affected, you know, that's a catastrophe that, you know, you cannot just, you know, uh, put it back like a genie, so to speak, right? And according to uh, cybersecurity for professional, he goes on to mention that the opportunity for this tool to be exploited by a bite actor is significant, right? And obviously, the, the decision for the company to launch in a, as an invasive technology, which is an invasive, uh, is the key word, uh, swiftly, quickly, and unthinkingly, is a major liability for consumers. That's why you know it, it it sends me red flags when I hear about this. And the safety nets that the company is featuring is not comforting at all. It's not enough actually, unless it's a hundred percent. Just like with the issue with Tesla, right, with their full self driving. So I'm very a big advocate regarding you know what they're doing. Uh, it's not 100%, but they're marketing it as a full self-driving vehicle, which is not. And same goes here with uh, Apple. Now, if, if security is not important to you, then, then it's okay. But if it's important to you, then you might want to think twice before you know, using their products in the future. So you may not just branch with smartphones. You can go to your tablets and even your uh, laptops and even desktop so you could just imagine the the repercussion of this because if you buy one product from apple you tend to buy other products as well so they're all integrated so they can have access to other products as well here which is kind of easy if you think about it so uh anyway the, the 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 government has to step in here i think eventually uh to, to decide whether this is allowed or not because obviously if it's just to uh, promote, you know, a good PR to your consumer or to your shareholders, which is good. But for the consumer, this is not a good sign here either way. Anyway, so, continue. so speaking of Tesla, we were talking about it. So nothing too severe in this instance. But, you know, if you plan to purchase a new Tesla vehicle in the future, well, guess what? Uh, your... Uh, uh, once you place an order or reservation fee, it's not going to be refundable anymore. What's even worse, it's going to more than double the amount. Now, is the amount pretty significant? Uh, not really, actually. So according to the article here at electric.co, so they're planning to double the non-refundable order fee here. So obviously, Tesla vehicles have been in high demand. So if... They're waiting for the recent, uh, going to be uh, the next release of their Tesla vehicle, right? Whether it's the uh, Tesla truck or the Model 3, right? The, the, the fee that we're talking about is only $250 up from $100. Now, even though it's not pretty significant, but nonetheless, it just goes to show you the supply and demand here. Because if there is no supply, uh, there's no demand uh, given, then Tesla cannot dictate the, the fee here, which was considered s smaller than before. Now, obviously, taking advantage of the, su the supply market uh, dynamic, there's more demand than supply, so they can charge more than they want. And if people can buy it, cannot blame the company here. They're just taking advantage of the situation here. So what happened before, uh, instead of paying $1,000 before when placing an order, that $1,000 will be applied to your total price of the vehicle, so which technically is deducted, so to speak. And then Tesla charge a $100 non-refundable fee when you place an order. Now it's more than doubled, obviously. So is it a big deal? Obviously paying for tens of thousands or even fifty to 100000 worth of a vehicle means nothing, you know, just to be able to have the right to buy the item. Again, it goes back to the low supply and demand here 
And what's interesting here, it used to be that the policy that they implemented that uh, anyone could return a car, no questions asked within seven days or a week. As long as it wasn't damaged and has less than 1,000 miles on the odometer. Now, obviously, it makes sense. It has to be in perfect condition, not abusing it and then returning that, oops, I don't want to buy it anymore and so forth. Now, obviously, that has changed nowadays because, again, th there's more people wanting to buy it so they can demand more from their consumers, pay more, pay more premium for the products and services. Not to say that they have a uh, HR department, uh, not HR uh, PR department, so to speak. Uh, the company gave up on its seven-day no question asked return policy. But what's interesting, the non-refundable fee has stayed. Obviously, it makes them slightly more money. So if they can command it, people are willing to buy it. You know, who who are we to blame the company? I'm sure other companies do do the same things here, and you know, people are still willing to pay. Like you know, in in online games, right? They, they offer this pre-order and if you're too excited, can't even wait if the game is actually legit or is it a worth your money? You normally, you'd wait for review before you actually decide to purchase it. But because of the demand, you know, the, a lot of hype, then you, you go on buying it, then you get disappointed later on. That's on the consumer, not on the business themselves. But if you learn from what happened in the cyberpunk uh, debacle, then hopefully lesson learned from there. Anyway... Uh, the Model 3 that's going to be released, uh, there's plan of delivery sometime next year. So, you know, uh, I'm sure a lot of people are excited to own a Tesla vehicle. Uh, even though, you know, Tesla has a lot of issues with regards to their vehicles and, you know, how they, uh, they, they go into production here. Uh, compared to other electric vehicles, they're still considered one of the top or the top. Uh, electric vehicles in the market with their technologies here now obviously they could do a lot more to improve and ensure that they're at the top of uh, people's mind when you talk of electric vehicles but you know with the full self-driving uh, uh, issue here that's my main concern and you know it's a safety issue rather than just you know if it's a feature that is needed or not you know marketing it as a autonomous vehicle is treading on dangerous uh, territory here and even their engineers have been uh, in previous articles stated that you know that they he shouldn't have pushed it to be considered as a fully autonomous vehicle yet which is decades away still anyway and you know even though there's demand high demand for vehicles whether it's a regular vehicle or an EV vehicle now the shortage of chips has significant impact not just in the computer industry but as well as the automotive industry and you know the long delivery times has been hampered and obviously with the shortage of chips they have to delay their production and you know obviously delay the delivery so that consumers can own and drive their cars quickly so how they you know solve this dilemma you know uh, it's up to their management to find a way to solve this issue anyway for lastly we have uh, the Olympic medalist here uh, obviously, our uh, what do you call this? The, the Olympics has already concluded, and many of our uh, what do you call this? Uh, winners, victors, and we have a few. Uh, congratulations to them, to our gold medalist winner, Miss Diaz. Then we have silver medalist and bronze medalist here, and we were talking about that. You know, they there should there should be a plan for those athletes who bring prestige to our country to have a sustainable plan for their future because all of their hard work and then after winning the medals winning the uh, awards and the monetary uh, benefits but what happened after that right because you know I, I read in an article before one of our great runners uh, women runners Lita de vega is not in our country anymore she has to go abroad you know work because there's no sustainable future for any athletes you know here in our country but anyway uh, according to the article here at fieldstar.com, uh, Olympics medalists receive their new vehicles as a reward for, you know, bringing medals to our nation here. So, what's interesting here is the type of vehicles that they were awarded. I, I was assuming they would be given much fancier, fancier uh, vehicles here. And the turnover was done in Tagaytay. Uh, interesting enough, UAAGI is the official exclusive Philippine distributor of Photon, which was the 
vehicle that was distributed, I was thinking they would be given a much better uh, vehicles of choice. You have Toyota, Mitsubishi, Nissan, you know, or or even Hyundai or even Kia. I was surprised that the, this was the vehicles that they were uh, giving away. And what's interesting here, uh, the president of the company, which was led by Rommel Sitin, uh, stated that they gave the vehicles to Ms. Diaz, uh, Nesty Petesho, and Mr. Carlo Paalam. Now, Ms. Diaz got a Photon Transvan 13-seater model. Uh, another is Ms. Petesho got a Cherry Tigo SUV. And then Mr. Paalam was awarded a Photon Grand Tour, Grand Tour, Grand Tour and uh, an MPV of sorts. Now, my issue here is uh, if those companies want to support the athletes here, I think it's important that they support them not just at the end of the day but throughout their process here because we need a lot of funding for our athletes to properly train and you know not worry about where are we going to get our you know financial backing which the government was supposed to be doing in the first place here and the president goes on to say that we are very proud of what our hard-working athletes have achieved in the global stage they brought so much pride and inspiration to their fellow Filipinos which are much needed in these difficult times. Yeah, I think I'd rather that you put your money what your mouth is and, you know, either sponsor those athletes or provide financial backing through their programs here, not just, you know, when they're, you know, have won because there are more athletes that have gone through the gauntlet and, you know, sad to say some of them were not able to reach the Olympics. But nonetheless, you have to be able to sustain them, reward them question is by the time when these athletes retire what will happen to them do we have any plans to to support them because uh, as it stands right now there's i think there's an ongoing issue with the ioc with regards to the weightlifting i think they were planning to ban weightlifting competition in the next iteration of the olympics and if that were to happen then miss Diaz can't compete anymore so her best chance of winning another gold medal will be you know, wasted because of technicalities, politics, or whatever issues that's happening outside of her own control. And what happens to her career after that, right? Anyway, you know, here's to hoping that we have a better situation with our athletes here so that we get more goals in the future. It's not just, you know, one, e one every decade, uh, one every century before we get a gold here. Hopefully, we can, you know, l learn from this experience and how can we maximize and get more women in the sports and how do we improve our chances which sports gives us the best chance of winning gold now obviously it tends to be more on individual sports rather than team sports and if you can see here i think uh, if i'm a betting man i tend to focus should focus more on women's sports because there are a lot of up and coming women's sports that hasn't been tapped yet and based on global competition we uh, we have a striking chance of winning more than just one gold or even you know multiple medals in the future here obviously we need the support of everyone here from the government from private sectors so that we can ensure our athletes are fo totally focused right you can just imagine if you're mr phelps the for the olympic swimmer from the united states right his whole job is just to focus on swimming day in and day out and if the government and everyone does their part right you know the result speaks for themselves 20, 20 plus gold medals 20 plus medals throughout his uh, Olympic uh, successful run at the Olympics I think that was in three Olympics right so you can just imagine that's what the best case scenario is I think we should strive on achieving that anyway that's another that's another episode for business update thanks again for watching come back again on Wednesday for more business update and if you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, if you're interested to check out the articles that I've discussed today, the full article is in the link in the description below. Anyway, as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.